I'll pray, we shall begin. Okay, our Father in heaven, if uh, God's for us, who could be against us, pray this morning you'll work for us in the classroom. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Class number five of 50. This is what I read as we closed our class number four. I quoted Matthew 5, 13, ye are the salt of the earth, All right? So salt must be mingled. Who'd like to read the rest of it? With the substance to which it is added, it must penetrate and infuse in order to be served. So it is, it is through personal contact and associations that men are reached by the saving powers of the gospel. They are not saved in masses, but as individuals. Personal influence is a power. We must come close to those whom we desire to benefit. And when we read that last time, I said, my comment was that it's uh, more than just sitting next to somebody on the subway. You've got to, and today our subject, crossing over. Crossing over. How to cross over. Uh, now notice the title of this chapter in Acts of the Apostles. In the regions where? Beyond. Beyond. You've got to cross the ocean sometimes, right? So the time had come for the gospel to be proclaimed beyond the confines of Asia Minor. What? I hear a, I hear a, a cry coming from where? Give me a more specific. Macedonia. Macedonia, Asia Minor. Macedonia. What are they saying? Come cross over. Cross over. <laughs> he, he stole my words. That's good. The way was preparing for Paul and his fellow workers to cross over into Europe. At Troas, yeah, it's an opportunity to cross over. At Troas, on the borders of the Mediterranean Sea, a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, <laughs> Cross over, right? Come to Macedonia. That's the Macedonian cry. Oh, I, I hear something coming from the earth today in 2021. What is it? Crossover. Crossover. The Macedonian cry coming today. Mm -hmm. Now, these next two things, I, I got to put them together if that's okay. When the Pharisees looked at Matthew, James, John, Nathaniel, Andrew, when they looked at those men, what they saw were uned uneducated fishermen. But when heaven looked, they didn't see poor fishermen. They saw, it says it, rich teachers. Somebody's blind. I wonder who. <laughs> you. Thank you. Now, this is a class in getting our vision tuned up 2020. What Jesus sees, we need to see. In other words, see it the way it is. 2020 spiritual vision. Seven of the disciples were in company. What's that mean in company? Together. You know, hanging out together, right? They were clad in the uh, humble garb of fishermen. They were poor and worldly goods. Rich. Read the rest, Ryan, then. But rich in the knowledge and practice of the truth, which in the sight of heaven gave them the highest rank as teachers. Pharisees, what do you see? Poor fishermen. God, what do you see? PhD teachers. <laughs> rich teachers. PhD teachers. As I was saying, this is the conflict in the two, right? First Samuel 16, 7. I don't see as you see, right? He's talking to who? A, prof a prophet, a, 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 a priest. I mean, not a king, but a prophet, a priest, a judge. Mm -hmm. And he can't see it. Uh, Matthew, oh, I, I didn't put it in. Matthew 9, verse 9. And Jesus saw a man named who? Matthew. Jesus saw him. What did he see? He saw a great teacher. Okay, he saw a great, he saw a great teacher. What else did he see? Did he see a Bible prophet? Yeah. Yes. Did he? Yeah, he saw things. But when the Jews looked at that publican, what did they see? A publican. A publican. That is a glaucoma, spiritual <laughs> glaucoma. Would you agree? You know. Now, an informed, an informed health evangelist needs to have the perspective of heaven, not this earth. Amen. Right. When God looks, what does He see? Same thing I see. When I look, what do I see? Same thing God sees. Ah, then you're what? Amos 3, 3? Walking together. Because can two walk together unless they see the same thing? 
All right, Sister Aisha, you want to read this nice little uh, subject on uh, science? Special Testimonies on Education, page 16. The term higher education is to be considered in a different light from what it has been viewed by the students of the sciences. Uh, yeah, yeah, see, you missed it. Because in the mind of man, even cooking and housekeeping, they're kind of connected. In the mind of God, cooking and housekeeping are connected. But when man sees it and God sees it, what they see are day and night different mm -hmm. right public opinion and God's opinion would you agree our subject this morning is cooking <laughs> now when you look at that what do you see yeah I see what the gospel in action a <laughs> gospel in action I see supper I don't I see souls being one <sighs> and a presentation of a golden opportunity to crossover read this the other day. Brother David, you want to read? The foundation of that which keeps people in health is the medical missionary work on good cooking. <laughs> some, there's some health ministry going on here. <laughs> now, now you be honest. Be honest. What will an engineering student say? Or a computer programmer? Not our PHP programming brother, not him. <laughs> but a digital engineering student. Hey man, what do you think about cooking? What will he say? <laughs> Thank you. This is just not digital engineering is dignified. <laughs> Cooking is not. Now the question is, what does God say? No. What does God say? I don't think it's dignified. What does God say? Counsels and diets, food. Now, if, if uh, sister, uh, sister, uh, sister, uh, I keep wanting to call you. No, 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 no. Sister Joanne. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm terrible with names. Sister Joanne, you want to read down to where I underlined? Mm -hmm. The whole sentence? Just, just read down and stop it dignified. <laughs> uh, it is not No, no, back up. Back up to let not. What yeah. What would become of those of our world if all who are... Yeah, back up one more. <laughs> Okay. Let not the work of cooking be looked upon as a sort of slave. What would the world? What would become of those in our world, of our world, if all who are engaged in cooking should give up their work with the flimsy excuse that it is not sufficiently dignified? I need the Emancipation Proclamation to free me from the kitchen. Come on, because we need to see like. <laughs> now, my subject this morning is a golden opportunity to present. It presents itself to cross over, and the devil sees it, and he's trying to put up the blockade. Yeah, that's it, all right? Cooking may be regarded as less desirable than some other lines of work, like what? Digital engineering. But in reality, it is a science in value above what? Oh. What about paleontology, or zoology, or anthropology, or biology? <laughs> they all pale in comparison. Thank you. Man's got to eat. That paleontologist doing his research. Oh, my belly's hitting my backbone. I'm hungry this morning. Come on. Digging up that prehistoric thing's not going to feed you breakfast this morning. Now, thus God regards. Sister Barbara. Thus God regards the preparation of healthful food. He places a high estimate on those who do faithful service in preparing Wholesome, palatable food. What's palatable? What's that mean? Tastes, Tastes good. good. Keep going. The one who understands the art of properly preparing food and who uses this knowledge is worthy of higher commendation than those engaged in, in any other line of, of work. Ooh, now, when the Lord says it three times, when uh, you know, when they, when they pierce the side in John 19, John says it once, then he says it twice, hence said it a third time. God means you listen when I repeat it, mm -hmm. right? Reiteration means wake up, right? Mm -hmm. ah, this talent should be, you know what? He's about to say it again. Mm -hmm. This talent should be regarded as equal in value to mm -hmm. ten talents. Mm -hmm. Now, if a health message is given by unhealthy evangelist, I'm sorry, unhealthy health evangelist, what is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I would never say that, but I'll say what David said. Hypocrisy. Hypocrite walking down the road eating a boiled egg, talking about what? Come away from... No, 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 no. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> if you like boiled eggs, I love you. <laughs> this talent should be regarded as equal in value to ten talents, for its right use has much to do with keeping the human organism in health. Here it comes. Uh, let's read it together. 
Because so inseparably connected with law and health, what does it say? It is the most valuable of all gifts. Three times. Uh, Matthew 17, verse 5. God says what he said in John 3, but he said he adds something to it this time. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. Won't listen. Hit three times. Cooking, mm, slavery, no good. <laughs> now, whose plane is that? You want to see what they're having for breakfast this morning on Air Force One? Yeah. Now, I would, t I would read the menu for you. Now, if you could, if you could see, it says a president. Let's see, presidential seal on the napkins. Everything says this is the president's grub, right? <laughs> I would read the menu to you, but I can't pronounce the words. <laughs> who that is more cultivated and aristocratic than me? Who'll read it for us? But you better know the words. Don't read it. Read through it first and see if you can know all, how to pronounce all those words. Then I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can. Dinner features a cap grease. Salad with salad. <laughs> You're not doing so well so far. Keep going. Homemade lasagna with beef bolognese and tiramisu cup is for dessert. Oh, I can't even pronounce the words. <laughs> but my dear friends, that's lunch. Lunch next day for the president. And if with Obama, Bush, Clinton, uh, Trump, they're all eating the same thing. Next day, I can say that. Burger and fries. <laughs> I can say that. Yeah. Now, next question. Does the president need a cook? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, got to kill himself. Look at the dessert. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't look at the dessert. <laughs> now, who said, did you say that, look at the dessert? Now, I'll let you read the next one if you don't mind. Erroneous eating and drinking resulted in erroneous thinking. <laughs> and the president's got the football, right? The finger on the bombs, and you're going to feed him a burger and fries? Come on, that's erroneous action. Aren't you glad God does Daniel 4, 17, the Most High God ruleth in the kingdom of men. And Daniel 2, 21, He removes kings, He sets up kings. God has a hold on every man in this earth. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> now, I'm going to go back and review, if you don't mind. There it is. I cut them out and pasted them together. First uh, Samuel chapter 3, verse 9. Speak, Lord, thou servant hearest. Mm -hmm. We won't listen. Mm -hmm. That's Eli telling Samuel what to say. Mm -hmm. Samuel got so flustered. Speak, Lord. <laughs> he got so flustered hearing the voice of God. Yeah. We hear this. We shouldn't get flustered. We should get informed. We want to be an informed health evangelist. Now, who liked to read? Uh, uh, Brother Oliver, I want you to read these. This, to sum it up, let's remind ourselves. In reality, there is a science in value above all other sciences, worthy of higher commendation than those engaged in any other line of work. It is the most valuable of all people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's check out Mrs. White's personal experience. What do you think? I prize my seamstress. I value my copyist. My cook. My cook. But my cook, Sister Nicole, you can read the whole thing again, the whole thing. I prize my seamstress, I value my copyist, but my cook who knows well how to prepare the food to sustain life and nourish brain, bone, and muscle fills the most important place among the helpers in my family. Sister White, who's numero uno there in sunshine? <laughs> ah, cook. Because without food, a copyist can't copy. A manager can't manage, right? A seamstress can't sew. Got to have fuel, right? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, this is Apollo 13. Anybody know what that's a picture of? Command Center. That's it, Command Center. Mission Control Command Center in Houston during the Apollo 13 prop flight. Now I want to show you a picture of Mission Control at Butler Creek. <laughs> <laughs> Command Headquarters of any institution. I can prove it. Let's say the manager here dies. Nobody knows it until they smell him stinking in his office. But if the cook dies, how soon do they know about it? Right. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> Lou's been dead three days. Well, I don't know. I don't care. Where's breakfast? <laughs> no, this is truth. This is truth. Isn't it truth? This is gospel truth. One meal. Where, where's Aisha? Why is Aisha? Command center. I, 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 yeah, there's a whole lot of things God said to prove it. Some will learn to be seamstresses, typesetters, proof. This is coming over the same ground again. My bookkeeper, my seamstress, my typist. The problem, you get into a position like that, consider themselves aristocratic to associate with the likes of that cook. 
That is that is bigotry. That is what's that word they got in, in, in caste system thinking? That is prejudice. That is not health evangelism. You are to cross over, not build walls. Well. Brother David, you can read the next uh, paragraph. This, this is a hard paragraph here. <clears throat> These ideas have pervaded nearly all classes of society. Yep. <laughs> the cook is made to feel that her occupation or his occupation is one. Yep, is that's it. right. Amen. Her low in the scale of social life and that she must not expect to associate with the family of equal terms. Can you, I'm oh, sorry, can you be surprised then that intelligent girls seek some other employment? Do you marvel that there are so few educated cooks? The only marvel is that there are so many who will submit to such treatment. On the uh, hierarchy in India, you're born there, you stay there. At the top, you got the Brahmin. Who's at the bottom? What's the word they call it? Untouchables. The cooks are what? They ain't touching the cook. Because I'm a copyist. <laughs> I'm a digital engineer making $140,000 a day. I also have an MBA from Harvard. I ain't touching the cook. And that pervades who? All classes of society. Now this deadly disease has infected the Seventh-day Adventist church. Because a lot of it from here on out is us, not them. This is the country of uh, talk of the town in Turkey is where? I was in Turkey. Everywhere you look, people are doing what? Eating. Eating. And this guy, this, they, they have inventive ways to get you to eat their food. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. No money, no honey. <laughs> I forgot to hook up my speaker. Sorry about that. I forgot. Everywhere, everywhere you go, culture seems to be revolving around what? Food. And this now, you can find some healthy options there in Turkey. There it is. What's on the left? What is that? Pomegranates. This guy will, will squeeze you pomegranate juice and orange juice. And I mean, he takes out the fiber. He takes out a lot of the antioxidants and the, and, and the phytochemicals. But is it good? Yeah. But you got to look hard for him. If you really want some whole grains, what do you do? This is a lady feeding to the pigeons the good stuff, right? <laughs> and in fact, when I was living in the Philippines, I was in, I, we were searching for whole grain food. Had to go to the pig food market. And, and, and the word got out, Luke keeps buying pig food. It was true. Because the only whole grains I could find, they were feeding to the pigs. I got to go down there and get something to eat. <laughs> oink, oink, oink. I'm not here to eat the pig. I'm here to eat the pig's food. If you want to be as strong as a bull, don't eat the bull. Eat what the bull eats. Yeah, she's selling whole grain plant food. Whole grain plant food for the what? Pigeons. That kind of thinking is for the birds. And the pigeons were eating it up. Healthiest pigeons in the world are in Istanbul. Can you tell what the guy's selling? Those are, look like um, walnuts or chestnuts. No, the chestnuts. chestnuts. Hey, you got Sister Nicole, chestnuts. And, and they're going, they're, you know, they're hot off the grill. They're going fast. And this is, a, now what, what I'm going to say, don't do, but do as I say, not as I do. In Turkey, you can sample before you buy. I didn't have a lot of money, but I had a lot of hunger. <laughs> so I did a lot of what? Sampling. In Turkey, you can get 20 kind of dates, 20 kind of apricots. I mean, the food capital of the world, I think. You like cherries? Come on, yes. I don't even know what that was, but there were 20 different kinds of it. <laughs> now, I know what that... No, that's cherries. <laughs> but, but I know what this is. Anybody else? Yeah, It's what is it? It's like lentils. Lentils? I don't know what that is. Are those beans? I know what that was. I don't. I don't know what that was. I was in a hurry because the shopkeeper looking at me taking pictures of the stuff. I know what this is. Anybody can tell us what that thing is? That's a fiery food. Yeah. Yeah. Can eating that kind of food influence your health? Oh, yeah. No, don't answer. No answer. <laughs> so there it is. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you why I show this now. Because that night, this is Michael Smith, a good friend of mine, like a son. He was with me in Turkey. And I was talking about this subject, this very subject of cooking. And Michael said, when we get back to Wildwood, the hospital, when we come back, they're going to ask you to give a report for the work in Turkey. Probably. He said, but we have never, ever 
ask a cook to ever get up and give a report. Okay. He said that tells you something. We had our next convention, asked Joan, who's running her kitchen then, if she'd get up and give a report. She said, ah, I'm busy in the kitchen. <laughs> and the problem is you take the health reform and you make it ugly. Often health reform is made ugly. Health deform. Now that word, back to that word unpalatable, right? Doesn't taste good. When you baptize a man into the church, does he know how to be a good husband? Does baptism make you a good husband? No. Does baptism make you a good cook? No. no. You got to what? Isaiah 117? You got to learn. And our learning curve seems to have somehow gotten disrupted somewhere by this kind of thinking. And to reason further, how can you teach others to value it, finish the sentence, if you know. value it yourself? And that's what I was trying to say. Ms. Barbara, you want to read this whole thing there? Often health reform is made health deformed by the unpalatable preparation of food. The lack of knowledge regarding healthful cookery must be remedied before health reform is a success. Yeah, you got to remedy this before you bring the simple remedies out. I'll give you an example. You know my brother Steve. All you know Steve. He's the head deacon in our church. And uh, Steve was not a Christian early on. And when I became a Seventh-day Adventist, Steve is some of those that know Steve, big guy, right? Yeah. Dear friends, you ain't seen nothing. He used to be really body. I mean, Steve was a big guy. And I started telling him about God. He told me he's going to kill me if I don't shut my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but he wanted to hear about food. Yeah, Steve ate. <laughs> yeah, he ate. So he talked about food and finally convinced him to come up to uh, where I was. I won't name the institution. Come up to where I was and have a fellowship meal with us. So here comes my brother. Yeah, into the, uh, into, the, into the convoy of angels, right? It's the Seventh-day Adventist institution. And there it's laid out. And Steve said, that looks pretty good. Yeah, food's okay, right? He got his plate full of stuff. And he, for dessert, he got this little piece of pie. I got the same piece of pie. Steve sat down. I sat down. Took a bite of the pie. Uh, it's sawdust, man. It's like sawdust. And I was trying to think of a way to get this pie away from where Steve tried to eat it. Because if... You come to the Adventist church and they serve you sawdust, your impression is what? And then folks don't know how to what? Cook. <laughs> oh, they're good at IT. Oh, yeah. They can do a Bible study. Daniel 2 can't touch them. But it comes to a piece of carrot pie, I can't stand it. And we just shot ourselves in the foot. We turned health reform into health what? Deform. Yeah, the sawdust pie. I never forgot it. <laughs> and I dare say, neither did Steve. Steve. <laughs> now, our 23-24 Matthew, uh, uh, why do you strain at a gnat and swallow a camel? Right? You blind guides, you got to get things. What's right should be on top. What's wrong shouldn't be there. Now, I don't know how many have gone to school. And I don't know how many have gone to school in an Adventist school. But if you didn't learn how to cook and came out instead of culinary skills with a mountain of debt, something ain't right somewhere. Would you agree? Amen. Who'd like to read for us? So, Sister Nicole. The students in our school should be taught how to cook. Well, I didn't learn it in school. Lord, what should I do? You want to continue, Sister Nicole? That's it. That's it. It should be taught at home first. Our sisters often do not know how to cook. To such I would say, I would go to the very best cook that could be found in the country and remain there if necessary for weeks until I had become... Now wait a minute, what if it doesn't work? In weeks you don't get it. What happens then? You stay longer. Yeah, months. Mm -hmm. You don't get it in months. What should you do? Well, stay longer. Years. <laughs> until I had become... Mistress of the art, an intelligent, skillful cook. I would pursue this course if I were 40 years old. Mm. It is your duty to know how to cook, and it is your duty to teach your daughters to cook. Never too old to learn. By the way, our class this morning, it's not cooking. It's crossing over. It is the obligation of the parent to teach the child how to cook and the obligation of the child to learn. My mom never taught me. She didn't know. Yeah, she didn't know. And so this is a reordering of the educational system. Okay. Let us carefully weed out from our course of study all that can be spared. 
that we may have room in the minds of the students and those things that can't be, I mean, that, that right, can't be spared, right? In which to plant the seeds of righteousness. This instruction will bear fruit unto eternal life. Now, I don't know what you take out. You know, here's a, here's a curriculum. You've got certain subjects. You know, I don't know what's essential. Well, what do you think? What's essential for a curriculum in a school to learn about God? We call it a seven-day Adventist institution. What's up there? What's, what's essential? Agriculture. Agriculture. Cooking. Bible. Bible. You know, Bible. Cooking. Agriculture. Cooking. I just reordered a curriculum if that's okay. <laughs> okay. I don't, you don't like that? I'm sorry. And we took out, yeah, we took out, uh, we took out computer science and put in a uh, cooking science. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. Mm -hmm. If you know how to program computers and you don't know how to cook brown rice, mm -hmm. then there is a deficiency somewhere in your soul. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is a hard-hitting class this morning. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Aren't you glad God has his boxing gloves on? If you ever <laughs> took those things off, we'd be done for. <laughs> Yeah, you can't spare cooking. You need to, our students should, be, should learn how to cook. Well, is, you really, is it really that important? You don't even get married if you don't know how to cook. People come, I want to marry that woman. First question I ask is what? Can she cook? <laughs> no, she can't cook. No, we don't marry her. <laughs> now, wait a minute. You're telling me not to marry this woman? She can, she can play the violin. She can speak Greek. She understands Latin. She's got an MD. She can, she can, she can program in PHP. you telling me not to, not to marry her? <laughs> she, she also said that men, men have like they from <laughs> <laughs> come, on, come on, because you got a list of practical skills. First and foremost in practical skills is cooking because you got to cook to live. Yep. Who'd like to read? Uh, 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 Sister Aisha. Upon no account should the marriage relation be entered upon until the parties have a knowledge of the duties of a practical domestic life. Yes. So the importance of it is that the person that controls the kitchen mm -hmm. controls the health of the family. Mm -hmm. That's what they call it, mission control. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, having said all that, having said all that, we were working with a guest one time. This was almost 20 years ago. 24 years ago. I was a staff member at Wildwood Hospital, and we got a call, I was in the administration, we got a call from a man who needed help. He was related to somebody very high up in the church, and we had a committee meeting, and we talked about it, and thought, no, too dangerous to bring him here. Now, I was a new Seventh-day Adventist. I said, he can come stay in my house, and they just looked at me like, what's wrong with him? I, I was, a, I, I, I didn't, you know, I, 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 I stay at my house. <laughs> and then uh, one of the brothers there on the committee said, I got a cabin in the woods. You take him up there and stay with him. Okay. He said, however, there's no electricity and there's no running water. I said, okay. I was 35 years old. Okay. <laughs> okay. Who's going to cook? Me. I had never cooked anything in my life except, <laughs> except hot dogs. <laughs> so I went to the store, the health food store at Wildwood, got a bunch of these boxes you could just add hot water to. Took the guy up there in the woods and almost killed him with my food. <laughs> this guy, I had him on the torture plan. We walked three times a day, five miles a day. In between it, we'd eat my food. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> and he said, you're killing me. And then we were in Lobelville. I gave it away. We were in Lobelville passing by, and he saw the Seventh-day Adventist church sign, and he said, I want to go to church. <laughs> I want to go to church. Why? Potluck. I want to go to church. I said, well, no, church. I said, oh. I said, okay. I went to church. Now, a teacher in our school, Elder Boykin, he was a teacher in our school. His son was a church member. We walked in. I had undershirt and blue jeans. It was up for the woods, right? T-shirt, blue jeans, walked into the church. And one of the guys, I knew some of the people, they looked at me. I said, we're camping, sorry. <laughs> we sat down for the service, and afterward, there was no fellowship lunch. Oh, and you could have just broken this guy's heart. And then, <laughs> then, this couple walked up. And they started talking to us and started talking about lunch. And the guy I knew tapped me on the shoulder and said, come here a second. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
He said, be careful, those are shepherd's rods. I said, ah, shepherd's rods. And then my question was, but does she know how to cook? <laughs> that guy was not looking for Daniel 2. He was looking for, <laughs> he's looking for something to eat. And so we went. And so we got there, and this guy had serious, serious issues. I mean, I can't, I'm not going to tell you what, there were serious issues. And as they were making noise with the pots and pans in the kitchen, our subject had a crossover. I said, listen, some things are going to happen here in a little bit. I said, they're going to bring some books out. They're going to offer them to me. I'm not going to take them. You're going to see fireworks. What are you talking about? I just, I just thought I'd warn you. So we ate, we ate, we ate lunch, and it was good. <laughs> it was good. And then they got the guitar, played a song or two. Oh, okay. Then uh, she said, I'll be back in one minute. I looked at him. <laughs> Came back with a stack of books. Said, here, my brother. And then I said, well, you know, I, I, I really can't take these. I, I, I don't want them. She started yelling at me. She said, you'll meet this in the judgment. <laughs> he looked, <laughs> got out in there in the truck. And uh, my dear friends, People care more about food than they care about the Bible in most cases. You got to bring what? Class tomorrow? You reach them before you teach them. And you reach and teach before you preach. That's tomorrow. Yeah, because God put on your tongue 9,000 taste buds. It was intended for enjoyment. And it ought to make you feel good after you ate it. It not only has to taste good, it must. Speak good. It makes you feel good, taste good, smell good, look good. It's got to be good. good. you got to hit it in all cases. Now, uh, how many people have a good doctor? <laughs> no, not one. <laughs> not one's got a good doctor. One. One. Well, my dear friends, if you don't have a good doctor, you better have a good cook. Because you see that cook three times a day, and the doctor you see three times a day if you don't have a good cook. You need a good primary care doctor if your cook can't cook. How do I know? To the health and happiness of the family. Nothing is more vital than the skill and intelligence on the part of a cook. That's it. Now, crossing over. Then I'll give you the homework. This is the one we read a few minutes ago, right? A family that cooks together stays together. First mission field is the home. Darlene and I cooked together. 40 years of marriage. So far, we're still together. And the food has gotten better every year. Not on her part, but on my part. I'm learning how to cook. Now, this is in southern Russia. This is mission control in southern Russia. Failure here is catastrophic. Now, these are ladies, right? You want to see what's coming out of that kitchen? The guy in the back back there is the guy, Daniel Balanz, his name I was working with. This is what's coming out of their kitchen. That that's, looks good, smells good, tastes good, good for you. And these ladies are working hard. Now, you notice in that picture on the far right, what do you see? The sink. Okay, that's it. Crossing over, point of entry, the sink. Yeah. Macedonian cry coming from where? The dishes. Oh, I don't want to hear this. Okay. <laughs> Come over and wash us. <laughs> no, I'm over and wash us. That's it. And uh, the ladies are working hard. And them ladies made a mountain of dishes. <laughs> and that, that's good. That's good. Cashews, that's pretty exotic. And that, yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's getting any better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell you what, dishes galore. My part was to sit there and talk, right? All improvement requires change. Calorie density tells me one pound of oil, 4,000 calories. And those people there, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, that's good, right? And then it's time to eat every day. Now, you tell me, did they put me back there eating with the cooks or eating with the guest? Yes, yes. Guest. I thought I got to cross over. Now, Luke 22, verse 27. Uh, which is greater, he that sitteth at me or he that serveth? Serveth. What would they have said? Because, right, because the boss man sits down, right? You don't go into the White House and the president scrubbing the pots, right? The boss man sits at the table and all the people are coming and serving him. But I'm among you, is he that? So there's the guy at the sink. I said, I'm going to butt him over and make some room for myself. I'm taking over. I'm crossing over. And this is how you do it. You say, I don't see any sense in that. See where Darlene is sitting now? We have crossed over. Instead of working with the lifestyle guest, we're now working with the servants. Christ came as a servant. 
Now this is the mission control, right? Now I'm in mission control. <laughs> I'm getting orders from mission control. Seeing the workings of things. And after every meal, you go over to the sink. You set an example, not just for the people you're, you're trying to help, but for the people that need help. Mm -hmm. And that's who? Everybody. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Now, I wasn't there as a guest. I was there as a worker. How about you? Mm -hmm. Now, this is uh, northern China. I showed some pictures of this before. But this is uh, January. This is winter in China. Right on the border, you got North Korea on the bottom and Russia on one side. This is Russian letters. This is the translator, youth pastor. Mm -hmm. And that's what? That's food. Okay, I hear the Macedonian cry coming from where? The kitchen. <laughs> now, this is the, this is the blessing and the benefit involved in this kind of thing. It's coming from the kitchen in China. So, uh, of course, I'm, 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 I'm doing the lectures, and I'm sitting. I took the picture with all these nice lifestyle guests, and I thought, i got to get back into the kitchen. <laughs> so I drift back in there. And I said, let me take a picture. The lady's huddled up. Can't speak one word of English. And I couldn't speak one word of, uh, what was it, Mandarin there, Mandarin. And they had some devices there, a cuckoo pot. I didn't know what that thing was. I don't know, is that a rice cooker? I don't know what it is. And they had something, they had something that would make that. And they had something that would make that. Dear friends, they had about nine, ten pots. I didn't know what they were, but I knew how to wash dishes, right? Boom, I made my, I'm on, I'm in the, I'm in the, I crossed over. No, I crossed over. Now, this is the blessing of crossing over. Hey, he's my buddies now. He said, we like him. I couldn't understand. I'll translate for you. We like him. There are the pots and the pans. Next question. I'm sitting there in China. The food is interesting. <laughs> it's not what I'm accustomed to. And I went back there to talk to my friends. I had crossed over. Now there's fellowship. I said, look, dessert. D-E-S-S-E-R-T. <laughs> they said, oh, yeah, wait, wait, wait. No, dessert. <laughs> dessert. Dessert. <laughs> now, the, the translator guy out there, I said, come on. I mean, what was his name? I can't remember his name. Young guy, nice guy, sweet guy, nice guy. I said, hey, man, how do you say dessert in China? He said, mm, whatever it was. I went back in and I said, no, no. <laughs> I ate my lunch. That's what they brought me. Anybody uh, know what they give you for dessert in China? Beans with sugar on it. No good. No good. The delicacy in China, red beans with sugar on it. They brought me this bowl of beans. Dessert. I said, a bowl of beans. And they said, eat, 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 because you want to be, you know. So I ate sugar on beans. And I said, back to the drawing board. I went, no, I went in there. I said, look. Now the reason, I, the reason I'm saying all this is the, ne is the next one. This is the next picture. You got to see this. If you don't, if you miss, I'm crossing over. I told the ladies, I said, look, can't say anything. Is this beans? No. Sweet. Sweet. <laughs> and the next day, that, let me show you the head, the, the head cook. Let me see if I can go to the head cook. It's that one on my left. On my left. Head cook. She came to me. Down, I think she had her hand behind her back. Yeah, yeah, what you got? Boom. <laughs> I said, yes, 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 come on, yes. And those cooks jumped for joy, yes, now. Every meal, the rest of the time I was in that place, I was in a health center, a conference, every meal, the rest of the time, here come them ladies. <laughs> I had crossed over. Now, now, Jesus knew his way around the kitchen. He had what? Crossed over. Who cooked that meal up for Peter, James, and John? Jesus did. And Jesus knew his way around the kitchen. The question is, do you? I'll pray. Our Father in heaven, we're thankful that Jesus was quite a cook. If he were cooking on Air Force One, he'd be making some dishes there that would give right thinking to our leaders. Uh, we certainly want to have right thinking here. I thank you very much for the work of my sister Aisha, the faithful food service in the kitchen, the food that helps us to think right so we can do right. Bless her richly. Bless her ministry in that kitchen. Help us all to understand that is ten talents at work. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.